You have no idea that negative thoughts can produce a negative effect in your life, whereas positive thoughts can produce a positive. Or you don't think you can do anything about your thoughts. You just think whatever falls in your head and you don't realize that you can not think something if you don't want to, and you can choose to think something that will benefit you. And I certainly had no idea that my words affected anything. I just said whatever I felt like saying to whoever I felt like saying it, whenever I felt like saying it. <laughs> and uh, the Proverbs 18, 21 says, the power of life and death is in the tongue. I mean, it's just that one scripture. When we speak to people we're actually hearing what we say as well as speaking to them. And the Bible literally says, I mean, it doesn't put it in these words, but we eat our own words. That the power of life and death is in the tongue and that we have to deal with the effects in our own life of those words. So. I was a very negative person because I grew up in a very negative atmosphere and I was actually taught to be negative. I mean, my father taught me, doesn't do any good to, don't trust anybody, everybody's gonna hurt you. Don't expect anything good because life is just, you know, blankety blank blank and it's not. And so I just had a very negative attitude. Anybody else here grow up with just like, you know, you're, your surroundings were all negative, and so that just became normal for you. And it takes a while. Change is wonderful, but it takes a while. You don't just say, I'm gonna change and then change. You do have to work with the Holy Spirit. I'm so grateful for the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I'm gonna send you an, a comforter. And also, the Holy Spirit is an encourager. And uh, we all need comfort and we all need encouragement, don't we? And Jesus said, you're gonna be better off when I leave because I'm gonna send the Holy Spirit. Well, how can we be better off than to have Jesus? Because he was in a human body, could only be one place at a time like we can, but the Holy Spirit Literally, I can be up here speaking and the Holy Spirit could be speaking something different to different ones of you. Same words coming out of my mouth, but they, he can deal with each one of you based on what you need. And um, I want you to understand that the Holy Spirit is ministering to each person here personally something that you need to hear. Now, let me ask a question. How many of you would, you, you need to feel better physically than what you, what you do? Okay. Well, I think most of us have an issue with that, and a large majority of it is just caused by the stress that we deal with in life today. And I can tell you the stress is not gonna go away, so we have to change how we, life's not gonna change. If it does, it's only gonna get worse. And I'm not being negative, that's just, I mean, things are gonna get worse before Jesus comes back. And uh, I used to think, you know, if my life would just change. Well, I finally figured out I was the one that had to change. Get the battlefield of mind, get power thoughts. Get, change your words, change your life. Get the help that you need and it's only gonna come from the word of God. Amen? Now, one of the most powerful principles in the word <clears throat> is that we reap what we sow. As long as the earth remains, there will be seed time and harvest. So Every harvest that we have in our life is because of some seed that has been sown. For example, the Bible says, the way you judge other people is the way you will be judged. If you sow mercy, you'll reap mercy. 
The Bible teaches us a lot about sowing and reaping concerning finances. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give back into your bosom. God does not need your money. But it's interesting to me that God could pay for the things that he wants to do in the earth any way that he wants to, but he wants us all to be involved. You know, God could raise up one billionaire whose life was changed by my teaching, and he could give me just a couple of oil wells, and I'd never have to receive another offering ever, ever. But God doesn't do it that way because he wants us to sow so we can reap. And you reap according to how you sow. The attitude you sow with, the amount you give out of what you have, and this whole principle of sowing and reaping is all throughout the Bible. And I love it, and I'll tell you one of the reasons why I love it, and this may sound strange at first, I feel like it gives me a little measure of control over how my life turns out. Not that I'm a control freak, I don't mean that, but I hate to think that there's nothing I can do about the way my life goes. And so this gives me an opportunity, boy, if I sow good seeds, then I've got a promise that I'm gonna reap a good harvest in my life. You know, if, if I want more friends, then I need to be friendlier. <laughs> if I wanna have more love, then I need to give more love away. Once you can see this principle and understand it, the Bible says, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. So you can change. There's a lot of things in your life you can change just by learning how to sow the right kinds of seeds. And every thought is a seed. I want you to get that. Every thought is a seed. We think about 6,000 thoughts a day. And if 5,900 of them are negative, <laughs> it's not too hard to tell why you would have a lousy life. I was so negative <clears throat> when I started learning the Word of God. And I mean, God has changed me, and I cannot stand negativity. And I'll tell you, if He could change me, there's nobody in here that He can't change, because I mean, I was negative. My attitude was, if you don't expect anything good to happen, then you won't be disappointed when it don't. <laughs> and I've come all the way from that to every morning in my prayers, I say, I am expecting <clears throat> something good to happen to me today. I am expecting good news. Don't you love good news? I love good news. Well, the devil's on a rampage with the news. I mean, they, if it's not negative, they say it's not even news. But I'll tell you, there, there is good news. We just need to hear it. God's doing a lot of great things in people's lives, in the earth. We need to have a good news newspaper. <laughs>